Rocking with PettyBlog.com. It's your boy Snoop D O W G, and you are now watching the Petty Blog. I can't be on the Petty Blog. <laughs> petty and T. Oh, petty. So they already know that I'm dropping the T. So let's get right into it. Basically, to make a long story short, Monique's oldest son, Shallon, exposed her for essentially not doing a good job as a mother. And he's only addressing it because in her sit down with Shannon, Monique expressed that she prays that her and her son will one day reconcile. So he's calling Cap, okay? Telling that lie about her praying to the universe. I knew to reconcile our relationship. And he also felt some type of way that Monique's quote unquote daddy, her husband, saying that he has three sons or whatever, which excludes him. So he probably feels ostracized because I'm sure that he saw him as a daddy, no pun intended. Like what you was is my stepfather. So how come I don't count as your son, huh? Make that make sense. She states that she prays to the universe in regards to reconciling her relationship, as I stated, um, is odd. My mother and I both know that that is a very false narrative and I would like to free her of having to continue telling that lie. Faith without work is dead and neither one of us cares to put forth any effort to reconcile with the other. Uh, we are separate as she put it because she doesn't care to be my mother any more than I care to be her son. Neither one of us uh, has had the desire to reach out to the other in a very long time and I don't think that either of us anticipates that feeling ever returning. Speaking with my mother directly in my experience will either lead to some odd newfound moment of clarity in regards to how she was as my mother, or she retreats back to daddy to move forward with a conversation. And I'm tired of hearing my mother's truths. Um, newsflash, I'm not sure if people know, but sting standing in your truth doesn't make you noble. Um, I'm not sure if people are aware of that. Uh, but responding this way, I feel as though it allows me to say my piece uninterrupted um, to those wondering, well, why say something now? Call it a form of therapy for me, I suppose. Um, but when her daddy had intentionally state, stated that they have three sons, but his wife is on the internet talking about the fourth son in a video that has millions of views, that rubbed me the wrong way. Um, but anyway, to inform a child that you are not interested in being a mother at a time when that kid is the only kid that has the potential to lead a child to believe that you are not interested in them specifically. Uh, but to take it a step further, <clears throat> you also admit my mother had also admitted to me that she didn't do the best job that she could do, um, which would also make one begin to question, you know, all of your past decisions and prior emotional interactions. But to be completely honest and fair, um, you know, those were things that I was willing to get over. You know, nobody's perfect. We're all human. But my mother showed a clear lack of humility, compassion, and consideration when taking any level of accountability for those things. Um, my mother does a fantastic job of acknowledging a lot of things, but she doesn't take accountability very well and anything that she may take true accountability for, it's only at her convenience, uh, in my experience. Um, but if I had to guess, though, her interest in being a mother probably started around the time that she married her daddy and had his children. Um, but that interest, you know, obviously seemed one-sided and as it should have been um by that time i'm in my late teens so to some degree the <laughs> excuse me the neglect becomes easier to hide or validate i guess you could say there are now two baby boys in the house you know that require attention um but still during that time however i still watched her enjoy the love and admiration of total strangers more than my own uh to this very day my mother has never expressed to me when if ever um, she became interested in me as her son. That did lead me down a path of questioning my self-worth and struggling to understand the value of a mother in a child's life. In the interview, she also states that she gave me an apology. But an apology to a son from a mother that consciously showed no interest in him holds no weight. Um, there are still women to this day. Uh, that my mother will give credit to for being more of a mother to me than she ever could 
her assistant, my cousin, being one of them. Um, every time, though, that my mother would state that she was right here whenever I was ready, um, that ideology still blows my mind today that a person could openly admit to being an uninterested, not put my best foot forward type of parent and be so self-centered that they still express to the kid, you have to come to me when you're ready. You got to come to me for us to make this right. <laughs> okay. Um, but I, I'm not sure what my mother could possibly think that she has shown me in the past or have for me now that's not money goodness gracious, that would make me want to come to her or, or whatever that whatever those feelings are supposed to be. Um, a mother is supposed to be the first woman that a boy falls in love with. Uh, I loved my mother very much, uh, but my mother loved things more than she loved me. And she would validate her love for me by giving me things and would proceed to call me ungrateful or inconsiderate if said things did not have the desired effect. Um, I couldn't imagine what it's like to be her though, uh, to ask God for what you want. And then he gives you what you need though, only for you to ignore it and have the audacity to ask God for something else. And um, I'm glad I don't, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, and when he told you no, uh, you went to the universe instead. Um, by no means though, do I want to give off any type of an impression that I am a victim of, of anything. Um, I, that's not the case. As you can see, I'm smiling from ear to ear. Um, I'm alive. I'm happy. I'm a dad. Um, I'm healthy, I think. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. I'm getting over a cold now. Um, you know, I still have my days just like everybody else. And, you know, there were a few things that she did teach me along the way. Uh, I did learn how not to love from my mother. Um, I also learned to make sure that I never lose so much of who I am that I have to validate it through another person. Um, and though I feel as though, you know, in hindsight, you know, I think she did it reluctantly. I do appreciate my mother, you know, for showing me what the top of the mountain looks like. You know what I'm saying? It did give me perspective on what hard work and dedication can get you. But I don't want something like that at the cost of giving up something that I created. I'm not, I, don't want, I don't want it that bad. And speaking of creations, I genuinely, truly, I really did want my mother to have a relationship with my daughter. Um, I even fought through those intrusive thoughts that were, if she wasn't interested in you, what makes you think she's going to be interested in your kid? Um, but it took my mother no time at all to prove that those intrusive thoughts were correct. Um, but what I can say, good for her, the universe did, uh, you know, bless her with three other sons, bless her with three other sons, and God willing, um, you know, I'm sure that one of them, all three of them are adults now, so I'm sure that all, you know, one of them, God willing, if not all three of them, will make her the grandmother that she wants to be. Um, I'm, I look for, I still look forward, you know, to that moment for her, um, but overall, when it comes to the boys, though, uh, I am happy that Whenever they do hear me talk, sorry, my phone did something weird, but no, but whenever they hear me talk, um, they don't know what it is. They can't, they can't relate to what it is that I'm saying. My experience with my mother is not their experience um, with our mother. Uh, so my prayer for her and them is that they continue to see her the way that they see her now. Um, I do also want to make sure that I say thank you to my mother for giving me life. Without that moment in time, I wouldn't have had my little one. But outside of that moment, there isn't anything that either of us, that either of us has to offer the other. Um, in my opinion, it's a waste of God's time and the universe's time for praying for something that you are not willing to put forth any effort to obtain. Uh, putting the work into becoming Monique is more important to my mother than being my mother. And I do not believe that it was, it was never about her being there and waiting for me but it was supposed to be about me being there and waiting for her um my mother's value had reached such a low point in my life that i no longer found it necessary to either want to wait for her or even go to her um but like i said man i'm super grateful that she has the opportunity to do it all over again you know i'm happy for her i hope the cat williams tour goes well but you know, the narrative that she prays for us to reconcile is a false narrative. It's not real, and I'd appreciate it if she stopped saying stuff like that. 
So yeah, Monique and her daddy has since responded again. And before we get into all that, as far as him saying that Monique was more into being famous than being his mother, he is not lying at all. We found footage from her on a podcast years ago saying just that. When he was a little boy, I wasn't interested in being a mother. I was interested in being a star. Her son is definitely well-spoken and his feelings are valid. But baby, when I tell you that Monique has responded and is trying to make him sound crazy and is justifying why her husband only claims his three biological sons and not him because he was like an uncle to him and not a dad. Like, wait a minute, what? He can't claim you as his son because he's always been Uncle Sid. Now that sounds crazy. Make that make sense. And his stepdad uncle says that Monique's son Shallon has mental illness and is basically not telling the truth. Oh wow. And in response to Monique being an absent grandparent to Shallon's daughter, her daddy said, no wait a minute, Monique was the one who bought your daughter things that she needed when she was born or whatever, and was the one who helped him as a grown 30 something year old man as far as him having a car now. Wow. And he even took it as far as to expose the fact that Monique's son Shallon be talking ish about his own biological father too. Ooh. And I ain't even gonna lie. It does seem like Monique goes along with whatever her husband wants her to do or say child. It's like he's taking being her manager to the extreme. Because at the end of the day, that's your son. You decide to have him, not the other way around. So with that being said, he doesn't owe you, you owe him. Don't that make sense? So if it's not right between y'all and you clearly admitted that you didn't even want to be a mother to him and missed out on a lot due to it, then baby, it's your job to go fix it. Like, how you mad at him? Plus, in my opinion, he kept his grievances respectful amidst it and even still show gratitude that you gave birth to him. My oldest son, Shalom. And this is what I want to say to this. There are some people that are saying, oh, you should be ashamed of your mothering skills. You should be ashamed of yourself. This is what I'll say. Let's let it play out. Because the same ones that said to me I was crazy, I was deranged, we watched it play out. So just like with my son, we'll watch this play out. And I, I do want to address this though, Shalom. When you say her daddy, her daddy, then that's when mommy gonna say stop playing because you know this has been Uncle Sid your whole life. Uncle Sid knew you before you knew you. So for you to say her three sons, yes, you're absolutely right. He has three sons. He can't claim you as his son because he's always been Uncle Sid and he knows your daddy very well and love that brother and the irony of all of this is not what is said but what's left off yes see you're you're leaving off the fact that the last time we laid eyes on you your mother got you everything you needed for the newborn baby about three years ago you're forgetting about how i from georgia am talking you through getting your car after we gave you the half the down payment for it and you were 31 years of age 32 years of age at that point and i'm negotiating the deal with the dealer for you as you sit there and you have the vehicle you're driving right now because of your mother these are the things that you're leaving out when you're expressing what you're expressing in reference to your mother you're not expressing the relationship that you have with your father where you spoke ill to him, not to mention spoke ill to your mother, but somehow your mother and father and I all have a loving relationship and communicate back and forth because of the love that we have for you. Because of the challenges that this young brother has had with mental illness. So we're communicating that out loud, to speak to our community, to say, listen, y'all, if we have more public conversations, there will be less private angst. Come on. There will be less private issues that we carry on because we're afraid to communicate in front of white. 